Hey, what's up guys? Wally here. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I want to share with you five actionable tips to help you get the most out of your data analysis courses. And this really is for anyone who is starting to take courses in the hopes of becoming a data analyst or going to become a machine learning engineer or something really cool in tech. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Tip number one, take notes. It's easy to get into the habit of not taking notes, especially because these days, most online courses are delivered in video format and it makes it feel like you're watching a movie or a YouTube video or some sort of entertainment. But data analysis courses are not a form of entertainment. They contain lots of steps, procedures, approaches that must be followed to get a desired result. And these steps and procedures are very difficult to recall offhand. There's a bunch of studies that show that students who take notes perform better and recall more materials than students who don't. And even if you recall the general concept of an idea, you may find it difficult to recall the exact formula or the specific syntax or the order of sequence of codes to write out that concept. And so it's essential to take notes. And thankfully, for most paid courses, notes are provided for download so you don't have to manually write things down if you do not want to. What I normally do is watch the video at a comfortable speed, understand what the instructor is saying, and then download the notes after. Some platforms even offer the opportunity to download video recordings as well. You can do that as well, only that it will take up significant storage space on your computer. But the whole idea is the more materials you have access to at a later date, the more your chances of recalling what you have learned. Right now, I'm taking the machine learning specialization by Andrew in again. And you can see how I have folders organized into weeks and topics just as the course is set up. That way, if I was looking for some sort of concept I want to relearn, I can quickly and easily find it. So the way to get everything organized is opening up a series of folders on your computer and labeling them according to the models of the course you are taking. For example, if the course you are taking has 10 modules or lessons, you want to open up 10 folders and label them according to the title of each model and then download your notes, your practice exercises, assignments, or any other useful material you may need in the future. Tip number two, get practicing. So with you already downloading your notes and saving all your materials, the next thing is to get into the habit of practicing. So studying and practicing are two different things to me. Studying involves you learning new information that results in an expansion of your knowledge within a specific subject area, while practicing on the other hand involves you trying to get better at what you have already learned. In other words, you're trying to solidify your knowledge at a newly acquired skill. For example, if you're learning how to swim as a beginner, you start by learning how to blow bubbles and then learn how to kick and then learn how to float. Once you master those basics, the next thing is to practice blowing bubbles and then practice kicking as many times as possible and then practice floating multiple times. So you've learned how to use Windows function in SQL. You now need to practice using it as many times as possible until it sticks. But how do you get data analysis concept to stick? Two ways. The first is using repetition. And this is where you go through the slides and materials again and get to reproduce every example, exercise, assignments in those slides. So whatever was previously created must be recreated. Whatever was highlighted must be noted. That way you're giving yourself the opportunity to practice and help you remember most of the important aspects of the course or the lesson. The second method is using meditation. This is where you start to think about the exercises you've practiced with and you start to create links between what you know now and the problems you've encountered in the past. Say for example, in your past self, you had a problem where you wanted to count unique items in a list. But instead of using, say, conditional formatting or count if formula, you decided to count them manually. With your newfound knowledge and skill, you can revisit that problem and solve it as you would have done in your present self. Alternatively, if you are the type that doesn't like to dwell on the past and want to focus on the present or the future, then think about how you can use data that you come across every day either personal or work related to practice. So if you currently work at a say school or a church and you typically take attendance every week, you can use that data, create a pivot table to group, summarize and aggregate the data. And then you can create a trend analysis and build a story around the data, focusing on where there are peaks and dips in attendance. 
or if your workplace has a data analyst, you can connect with them and ask them to give you some data set to practice with on your work related laptop. Ultimately, what you're trying to achieve is to utilize every opportunity that comes your way to practice, practice, practice. Once you inculcate the habit of practicing, you will become better faster. Tip number three, get finished. The concept of get finished is to finish whatever you start. And as simple as it may sound, it's one of the most mentally challenging things to accomplish when it comes to taking online courses. And there's a bunch of reasons why that is so. The internet is a major source of distraction for so many of us. On top of that, we all have things to do. We have families to take care of. We barely have time to sit in front of a computer to take courses. Interestingly, research shows that over 90% of learners who take online courses start and do not finish. According to a study, we try to understand why people start courses and not finish. They established that there are four types of learners with varying motivations for deciding to enroll for a course. The first type of learners are lockers, and these are majority of MOOC participants where they enroll only to observe or at best sample a few items. Many of them don't go beyond registering for a course or at best watching the introductory parts of a course. The second type of learners are drop-ins and these are learners who become partially or fully active participants for a selected topic within the course. They do not attempt to complete the entire course. They usually only focus on just using the course informally to find content that help them meet their goals elsewhere. The third type of learners are passive participants and these are learners who view a course as a content to consume and expect to be fought. These learners typically watch videos, perhaps take quizzes, but tend not to participate in activities or class discussions. And the last type of learners are active participants. And these are learners who fully intend to participate in the course, including consuming content, taking quizzes and exams, taking part in assignments and peer grading, and actively participating in discussions via you know, forums, blogs, and social media. And as a beginner learner in data analysis, you want to swing between being an active participant or at least being a passive participant, depending on if you want to participate in class discussions or not. And so how do you become an active participant? First, live by principle to always finish whatever you start. Secondly, set a learning goal to learn a minimum of 10 hours a week. And lastly, if you have the resources, pay for the course so that you can have that extra bit of motivation to finish it. Tip number four, get producing. Now at this point, you've finished your first course. It is time to start producing. And the concept of get producing is really all about putting all that you've learned together to create something. So at the end of most courses, there's usually a custom project, a final exercise or assignment or something grand that signifies the end of the course. And you want to be able to produce that thing that has been asked of you to do. It's usually a stretch exercise, usually very lengthy question, one that quite frankly tends to be intimidating. But when I first started learning data analysis, especially when I was learning SQL and I came across a lengthy question, I almost certainly lost interest immediately. But over time, I overcame the fear of lengthy questions. And one of the strategies that I use to answer questions like that is to break the question down into multiple parts. So here's a question from one of the courses I had done in the past. And as we can see from this question, it's quite lengthy. Breaking it down into smaller questions makes it easier to answer. And then you can start to see how the pieces connect to one another. And once you start seeing how the pieces connect to one another, the solutioning will start coming to your mind. The whole essence of producing at this point is really seeing how you can put together what you've learned in the immediate to answer a challenging question. And it's also a way to flex your analytical muscles and see how much you've developed in your ability to synthesize a question and get to the solution. Tip number five, get good. The concept of getting good is recognizing that you haven't fully mastered all the skills you need to become an expert. You're still learning and there is need to continue to learn. So how should you continue to learn? Well, personally, I use this framework called the six count rule. Not to get too technical, but here's how it works. When I'm learning anything new, I try to take at least three introductory courses on the subject, tool, or concept that I'm learning, after which I take 
two intermediate courses, and then finally I take one advanced course. And in total, that makes it six courses in order for it to fully stick. In between taking these six courses, I also look for practice questions and interview questions on the subject or area. I build a repo of formulas and queries and codes that I've written, BI reports and capstone projects I have produced. Now, if you're able to follow this framework, you will become an expert learner in no time. I can guarantee you that. Any additional course you need to take after the six courses, you're only looking for specific things to learn and not generally interested in the entire course. You are now a dropping learner, able to start and finish a course in a week because you're not learning the entire thing. And this is the stage every beginner must strive to get to. As an expert learner, you probably won't be watching this video about how to learn because you already know how to. But in this stage, this is where you start recognizing your strength as a data analyst and you start to see where there are gaps in your knowledge of a particular subject or tool and know how to fill those gaps. At this point, you can choose areas or niches in analytics where you want to focus or expand your knowledge in. For example, the world is all about AI these days and there's so much hype around AI that you may want to start exploring that part for yourself. Or you might just want to become an expert in business intelligence applications, expert in SQL query writing, expert in machine learning, expert in data engineering, and so on. And once you have an idea of where your strength lies and what your interests are, then you will know which direction to go. This is the stage where I'm at and it took me approximately six years to get here, but it doesn't have to take you that long. Certainly, you can do it much faster with continuous studying, practice and learning. So guys, these are the five tips to help you get the most out of your data analysis courses or any other online course out there. I sincerely hope you found this video useful and if you did, do me a favor, smash the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.